I'm Reverend Sam, and this is Power Encounter TV broadcast. This day is a day of deliverance for you. This day is a day of refuge. Oh my God. I see as it were some people, they have run, and I see them panting. <sighs> In the name of Jesus, I command that you receive refreshing right now. From every affliction of life, you are the one that I'm sent to this day. Receive refreshing. Receive deliverance. Receive restoration. In the name of Jesus, I decree that the hand of God will stand against every enemy of your destiny. All those who are pursuing you, who do not allow you to have rest. This day, the hand of God shall be heavy against them. In the name of Jesus. The same way God made Pharaoh to be destroyed so that Israel can be free. The same way God made Pharaoh to be destroyed and Herod to be destroyed so that the people of God can praise God. This day I decree that the hand of God will be heavy against the accusers of your destiny and you will receive freedom this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want us to go through Psalm 91. This psalm is a prophetic psalm because it has so many meanings. Let's go to it. Psalm 91. I want us to read from verse 3. He said, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Do you know what it means? You know a snare, a trap. In Africa, back in Africa, we have mouse trap. You know? So, and then, um, so, you know, the enemies of our destiny, there are a lot of spiritual trap they have set. Even might even be at work that they will be sending spell. They will be sending incantations and enchantment to make you make mistake. Those are sneer of the fowler. They are called the fowler because they are the ones that want to uh, catch you. But the Bible says the Lord will deliver you from the sneer of the fowler. But you see, for, but for that deliverance to take place, you have to set your heart on God. You have to set your heart on God's ability to deliver. Because, you know, working with God is by faith. You are a spirit. God is a spirit. You need spiritual connection to receive from God. But God said, I will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. It doesn't matter how many they are. It doesn't matter. God will always deliver you. Even if it means that God will make the, the sun to become dark. Even if it means that God will cause an unusual occurrence that will, that will make some things to happen. That will make your adversaries to suddenly become blind towards your mistakes. God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Lord, I receive it in Jesus' name. But do you receive it? Now, he said, he will deliver you from deadly pestilence. There are a lot of diseases that are rampaging right now. Especially in this Western world. You, see, you hear a lot of diseases. You hear a lot of special medicines. But the Bible says that to those people that put their trust in God through Jesus Christ, he said he will deliver you from deadly pestilence. Somebody say, but man of God, I'm, I'm so sick. All these diseases are around me. They are ravaging my family. Uh, listen, look at me. The reason why I am telling you is so that you can react against it. The reason why you are confessing it is because you have accepted it as your own. Do you know you can say no? Asthma is not mine. You can say no, cancer is not mine. You can say no, arthritis is not mine. Because you see, the Bible says that the power of life and death are in your tongue. By, by the words of your mouth, the Bible says you are entrapped. You are snared by the word of your mouth. Many of us will call a lot of evil on our head. And then when those things happen, you begin to blame God. You are the one that called them. You have to fight against it. God told Joshua, I have given you the land of Jericho. I want you to go in and possess it. These are part of the covenants of God for your life and for my life. We have to go in and possess it. I remember when I first gave my life to Christ. Let me tell you something. I used to be sick every, at the same time every year. Around June. Around third time. But this part, and, and from as long as I knew, until I gave my life to Jesus. The year I gave my life to Jesus, I was still sick like that. But that year, I began to pray. I said, no, by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. I reject this sickness. My body was aching. Everything was happening. I said, no, I reject this sickness. I curse you in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb, I have been redeemed from sicknesses. I have been redeemed from diseases. Can I tell you the truth? That was the last year. From that year, boom, it never came back again. You know why? Because I reacted against it. Why am I showing you this thing? To let you know that pestilence are not part of your life. 
Pestilence are not part of family's life. Someone is watching me right now. You have an issue of sickle cell in your family. God wants to heal you. There's nothing God cannot do. He can turn that blood to AA. There's nothing God cannot do. Deadly pestilence is not part of God's covenant. It's part of the curse of the law. And if you have given your life to Jesus, you are already a child of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He will cover you with His wings. And under his wings will you find refuge. Our God is a strong refuge. When you see the enemies left, right, and center, always remind yourself you are under God's protection. You are under God's protection. Always remind yourself I'm under God's protection. No evil can come near me. No, no, look at what it says. Look at what it says in verse 7. I'll, I'll come back to that verse 4. He said, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand. At your right hand, but it will not come near you. If you believe it, you will receive it. They will have evil report left and right, but because you stay under the covenant of God by your thinking and by your confession, evil will be far from you. Evil will be far from you. If everybody say, ah, if it comes, everybody say, no, it's not going to come to me. I am under the wing, feathers of the Almighty God. I am protected. God is my refuge. Every affliction, every sickness, every disease, in the name of Jesus, I command you out of my house, out of my children's life, out of my wife's life, out of my husband's life. You can do it. You can do it. You have been given a name that's above every other name. At the name of Jesus, the Bible says, every nail shall bow. Now let's go back to verse 4. The Bible says, his truth is a shield and a buckler. That's why you see, I love to teach. Because teaching will help me to keep my faith. Teaching will help you to be able to receive everything that God has, God has prepared for you. Understanding is what makes you aware of your covenant. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Jesus said, you know the truth and the truth you know shall make you free. You see, understanding changes a man's confidence. The Bible says a wise man he has is bold. A wise man has confidence on his face. You've got to start challenging Satan right now. If you are sick in your body and the sickness keep coming and coming and coming, I rebuild the root of that sickness in the name of Jesus. But I want to begin to do something. I want to begin to speak to your body. Speak to that sickness. I reject you by the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed from sickness and disease because by his stripes I have been healed. Even if they say it is genetic, that means it's from your bloodline. Tell them, tell Satan, that no, I now have a new life. I have a new blood flowing in my spirit, and it is called the blood of Jesus. So every consequence of my natural blood, I command it to die. Because two covenants cannot stay in the same place. I accept the covenant of the blood of Jesus. So every negativity that comes with the covenant of my natural birth, I command you to stop. I command you to be destroyed. You've got to learn how to use the scripture to fight. Apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, remember the prophets that have spoken on your head and fight a good warfare with them. Why am I teaching you the war? So that you can stand against the enemy. Do you know that in Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, when the devil came against Jesus, what did he use? He used the word of God. Many of us are so lazy as Christians. We don't even read our Bible, but we can pray. We can do biri biri. We can do dry fasting, but you won't read your, the word of God. I don't understand it's like someone that you have all the all the armor, you put them on, but you don't have a sword. Doesn't make any sense. You can't attack the enemy with, with, with nothing. Hmm. In verse 5, the Bible says, You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that fly by day. So there are terror that fly by night, there are arrow that fly by day. He said, You will not fear the pestilence that strike in darkness. Not the destruction that wastes at noon day. Every time of the 24 hours, there's one kind of evil or the other. In fact, Jesus says sufficient unto each day is the evil thereof. Apostle Paul said the days are full of evil. So there's, there's evil in every day. But you know what? 
That evil is not permitted by covenant to come in near you, to come into your building, to come into your home, to come into your business, to come into your body. You can react against any evil that you see around you. You can say, no, I reject every form of evil. Every evil report I reject you over my life, over my over my papers, over my status in this country, I reject evil. I reject evil over my children. I reject evil over my financial life. You can reject every form of evil. Why? The Bible says, it shall not come near you. But you see, if you are going to walk in this understanding, you have to remember God's covenant. And not allow what you are hearing from everywhere. And what the example of other people that are falling. Don't allow those things to make you change your mind about your confidence in your God. Because as long as your confidence is in the covenant of God, God will stand to fill his word in your life. But when you begin to confess negative things, you shall have whatsoever it is that you say. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. Look at verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. I like that. The dwelling place. The Lord is your dwelling place. It's not like you, you are here tomorrow, you are, you are not here again. No. You have made God your dwelling You have said to yourself, I am serving this God in living and in death. Is my God. The Bible says, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high, who is my refuge? You have made him your dwelling place. He said, because your dwelling place, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No evil. Somebody say no evil. Say it again, no evil. Say it again, no evil. Say it again, no evil. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. The Bible said that no evil shall be allowed. And when you believe the word of God and evil is coming, you will tell that evil, wrong address, out! In the name of Jesus, I command good report to begin to come. I command good report to begin to be spoken about me. Every angel of evil report, I shut down your mouth. I curse every tongue that speaks evil about my destiny. Oh, yeah, angel of good news, begin to cause men to say good about me. Let them begin to see good things about my destiny. When you begin to live your life by the covenant of the word of God, your, your experience will begin to change. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague will come near your tent. Why? Verse 10, verse 11. For he will command his angel concerning you. What will they do? To guide you in all your ways. You see that? That's why evil cannot come. Because there are angels on God. Every one of us have angels. He said, on their hand they will carry you up. Lest you strike your foot against a stone. Not only that, you will tread on lion, you will tread on adder, on young lion and serpent, you will trample on the foot. Wow. I did not spend so much time. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, the revelation of this understanding will become real in the heart of your people. That Lord, everyone will begin to have testimony based on this word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Connect with me on Facebook. We have a lot of prophetic messages going on on Facebook. My um, ID is Living Witness. Connect with me, send friend request, and I'll accept you. I've got to go right now until I come here again next time. Don't you ever forget, no matter what you have gone through in life, now that a child of God, one thing is very sure, the testimony of your life will be that you are wonderful because Jesus is real. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Lord, you are great. Thunder announce your presence, the storm announce your power, I can't imagine your greatness.